Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and check it out. We're reviewing the SPC Maker 95 GF racing drone, FPV racing drone. This is an FR Sky protocol receiver already installed. And you may notice this environment is a little bit foreign. And that's because I'm on vacation. Let me just pan the camera up here real quick. And you can see I'm in a little log cabin in the woods of New Mexico. So that's why I've been taking a little break from reviews, not really getting them out um, as soon as I normally do, as much as I normally do. But I'm sure you guys can understand I'm on vacation, having lots of fun with the family. And keep an eye out, I did some reviews while I've been here. Um, this is going to be probably the third or fourth review. I brought a few of these items with me. I am going to connect it to my Tyrannus X7S and also be flying this thing with the SkyZone goggles. So you'll be able to see some recorded video on here. Let's get started with this full review of the SPC Maker 95GF. Okay, so just wanted to give you guys an idea of how this thing comes. Just came in this plastic wrapped case and I've heard good things about these SPC Maker, this company. And so we'll just get right into it. Again, this is the FR Sky version. Let's get out of this noisy plastic. And you can see the case they give us is this really nice, a hard case. It's actually hard in here, so it's not going to get smashed or anything. It's got kind of like this vinyl weave material with the branding here on the top. It's got a nice little handle here, and everything looks very well put together. SPC Maker little tab here. Very good quality zipper. And that may be something I want to share with you now is the SkyZone goggles. Oh my goodness, what happened to the zipper? Look, I tried to zip this thing up. And the zipper doesn't zip, you see that? <laughs> and I guess this is a problem with these sky zones. So I just keep it like right here, the zipper in the front, and it seems to do okay. Of course, little things are gonna fall out, so make sure they're secured inside. But just wanted to go over that little flaw with the sky zones. Hopefully in the future they fix their cases. But no problems with this case. This thing zips up really nice and tight. And let's open this guy up and show you what's inside. So check this out. On the top level, we can see that we have a little wire mesh or a little mesh bag here with an elastic strap that we're storing some propellers in. And these are two inch four bladed propellers. As you can see in there, they give us two sets. And just look at this bag here, really nice looking. Also, we can see that we've got two batteries in here. We've got some tools, we got zip ties, we got power adapters, and then we have some hardware in here. But check it out, there's the quad itself. So the little 95 uh, GF quad, and look at that thing. So let me pull it out here. It looks like it's attached with some zip ties in here. And this case is just phenomenal. I mean, for traveling, that's one of the reasons I took this thing with me because it's already got this foam case in here with all these slots for parts and stuff. Pull this little bad boy out of here and look at this thing. And as you can see, the case is just kind of set in here. Oh, there was some Velcro that just fell out. The foam is just set into the, to the case, so you can just push that in, take it out as you want. Getting to this little amazing drone itself, let me take these, these are the little tie wraps that hold it in to the bottom of the foam there. You can put those in or if you want to again for traveling. But check this thing out, look how thick that is. That's a good two millimeters, if not more, of carbon fiber. And they really went the extra mile and kind of uh, painted the accents. This is like a pinkish purple. I'm not sure if I can really focus that close on these, but they are S1104 KV is 7,500 KV. So screaming little motors here. We can see that the motors are just going back to the flight controller and power board. And check this out, it's a triple stack. So we have our power board here, then we have our flight controller, and then we have our video transmitter board on top. And we can see that we have this dipole video transmitter here with that little collar there. And then already installed is the FR Sky antenna. It's already pre-installed, pre kind of shrink wrapped in the little tubing up on the back. So that's not gonna get into the propellers. There's no way that's gonna get down in the propeller. So great little combo here already pre-done. We have the XT30 connector already connected. Turning it over to the bottom, we can see more of the carbon fiber. They chose to put all four screws in the motor. Some don't, they just put two screws to save weight. So you know this thing is gonna be really durable when it crashes, and we're gonna, probably gonna be doing that in just a sec. Coming over to the front, there's the camera. So it looks like one of those little, I can see the wording there in the bottom. It does say run cam down in there. It might be kind of hard to see on the camera, but all the way on the bottom, it does say run cam. So this is a true run cam mini 
camera. There's the wide angle lens we're gonna be using for FPV. Over on the top, nothing really to see. Probably not gonna be able to fit really a high definition camera on here unless you have a really small one. So I'm just gonna be recording the FPV that I'm seeing for you guys on the screen. There's the micro USB connector there for programming. It looks like that's a little switch for adjusting the video power and the channels all in one button. It's just long presses and short presses for channel adjustment and video power. In the back here, there is a tiny little LED strip with two LEDs, so that's gonna light up to give us some status and also um, some visibility. And I'm also seeing, look at that, it also has a beeper. So down inside there, there is a little beeper. So we're also gonna have beeper. So hopefully this has got OSD. We'll be able to see that on the screen when we're flying it. Pretty darn awesome. That seems to be just about it for the quad. Uh, let me put that back in this little thing and go and check out what else is in this package. So check this out, 350 milliamp hour, 70, uh, 30C batteries, sorry. Uh, this is just like a generic SPC maker branded a LiPo battery. They are 3S Velcro straps here with the SPC Maker logo on them, just the mini Velcro straps. And not only one battery we're getting, but we're actually getting two batteries in the box. Here's the same thing on the other side, same exact battery and same exact Velcro strap. A couple pieces of Velcro. So if you'd like to put this on the bottom to help hold your battery in place, they give you two full pieces of Velcro uh, sticky tape here. And then they're also giving you four little mini uh, tie wraps. So if you didn't want to do something with the tie wraps and change some configuration around, you can, so that's great. Moving on down to these two little holes here, a whole bag of hardware. This whole set, it looks like it's just gonna be for putting on the propellers. And then we've got some extra screws for some of the screws throughout if you lose some of those, so. And then last slot here, we have an XT60 connector adapter that goes into an XT30. So this doesn't look like it's gonna be an adapter to adapt those batteries, because this is both uh, male adapters. So you're not gonna be able to plug this in here. So this looks like it's gonna be for charging purposes. If you have a charger that only has this connector, um, go ahead and char plug that in, and then you can charge these batteries by plugging them in just like this. Anyhow guys, uh, that is the quad, the unbox of it. I hope that was informative for you. I'm not done yet. We're gonna put some goggles on, get these batteries charged up, and I might even try some of my GNC higher C batteries on this one out in this flight test. I'm gonna get out to the park because I tried flying around the forest in my mom's cabin with that little HGL 145, I believe it was, that I've also been reviewing on vacation, and I was just ping pong off all of these little pine trees in her yard. So I'm gonna try to get out straight out to the park with this one and let's see how it does and do a pros and cons. Let's go fly it. And what I'm using for this flight, which I probably should have done with some of my other flights in the house, um, around my house in Hawaii, was use this Menace RC Bandicoot 5.8 gigahertz linear antenna, patch antenna. This is a really good one. Um, I went ahead and scrounged before we left and found it in all my junk in my garage. And also I'm just using one of the stock antennas that come with the sky zone. So that should give us a pretty good spread around the park here. Depending on how it's flying, maybe we'll try some uh, hole shots through this little playground. Nobody's here except my son Kian. He's just kind of skateboarding over there. So nobody really to watch out for except him. <laughs> so. Anyway, I'm going to be using the X7S, Tyrannus Q X7S for this flight. Basic configuration, all I did was bind it. There's a bind button right down here on the receiver, so you press that when you plug in. When this is in bind mode, it's a um, D16 is what this is using. So the D16 mode, uh, no problem, bound right up. And all I did was go into the beta flight and all I did was adjust, made sure my receiver was working correctly on the sticks, everything was doing the right thing. And then all I did was go into my modes and I put, uh, this has a beeper here. This temporary switch has a beeper in case I lose it. This is my arm switch right here. And then this is mode. So stabilize, horizon, and air mode. So it seems like this one, if you hit hard and then it, you try to take off again, you may be uh, cutting the power line. So keep that in mind, maybe like a zip tie right here. Actually, I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna zip tie this cable a little bit lower so it keeps it out of the um, propellers a little bit better. And they give you a few zip ties right in the box. Sorry guys, I know this is taking a little bit to get this thing going, but these are the little tidbits that you know people can use right off the bat before they end up flying and 
damaging their their quad right off the bat. This is really good stuff to know. So I'm not going to go super tight because these are power wires. I don't want them to nick and short out. But I'm going to go tight enough to where these guys, this won't slip up. And these power wires are going to be kind of, you know, pushed more down away from the propellers. That seems about good right there, just at the bottom of that standoff post. Okay, so it doesn't like being off center at all. So I'm in stabilized mode, and just keep in mind that if you are gonna launch, make sure you're on a really level surface. So I'm gonna switch right into air mode. You see how I'm in air mode now? A little bit of a um, shaky start getting out there, but okay, here we go. So the screen is really bright. This camera is super bright. And it's feeling pretty good. It's a little bit of wind from my back. It's you know, I'm thinking it's about five mile per hour. Already hearing a beep. Already took so long starting this thing up. Whoa, already getting quite a bit of uh, scratchy on the signal. I didn't even try to adjust the, um, keep in mind, I didn't try to adjust the power of the TX or the VTX. So let's see what these rates are like. Whoa, <laughs> we have crazy rates out of the box, guys. Wow. Yeah, so super fast rates out of the box. Set up for kind of like racing. And uh, I'm assuming this is gonna probably cut out a bit when I go behind this tree. Not too bad. Okay. So you can do super quick. Let's go under this, uh, let's try to go under this net right here. Hopefully not get tangled in it. Nice. Holy smokes. Yeah, I tried to do a front flip there and did you see how fast it flipped so these batteries seem to be dropping really quick I'm already at like 10.5 volts kind of going over the road there behind me so it's pretty scratchy wow so a little bit of flutter on hard turns you see that but of course as fast as you can turn your thumb it seems to want to punch <laughs> okay so really a blast to fly but that so that's for sure it's it's really good at flying excuse me it's hard to talk and fly at the same time so right around 10 volts I'm gonna want to bring this thing in start bringing it in so we're still just above 10 I'm hearing it beep a couple times let's go under this tree a bit do some more acrobatics so the punch is really good so you can see me saving myself okay we're getting low now we want to bring this thing back in we'll try some more on the other battery where am I? I'm right in here. I'm gonna try to land it as close as I can without getting hurt. Maybe right on this black top. Oh, okay, that's it. Powering off, you see the video's getting kind of weird because the voltage is dropping too much. Okay guys, so I got that GNB 453S in here. You can see how much larger it is compared to uh, the stock batteries it comes with at least. It's a little bit flatter, like top to bottom a little bit smaller but it's definitely bigger uh, sideways and front to back long ways anyway we'll see how this thing can handle it and see if we can fly maybe a little bit longer I'm gonna get maybe a little bit more aggressive with it and see if I can go through some of this playground stuff go into air mode let's just go for it whoa definitely more punch Whew. with this uh, GMB battery oh my gosh yeah, crazy amount of punch. Look how fast that thing just spins. I'm scared to go through these playground items. Okay, so my, my thumb, let's go through this uh, swings if we can. Wow, okay, so we nailed a swing. <laughs> we nailed a swing chain, but we're still flying fine. I probably partially bent, I wouldn't doubt it, I probably partially bent a, uh, whatchamacallit. <laughs> <laughs> and probably did it again. <laughs> There's just so much punch with these GMB batteries. It's silly. It's really fast, guys. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm going to have to maybe come in from this direction and see if I can thread the needle on underneath this thing and then pop up. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Leave it to me to just crash like crazy, man. Wow. So yeah, from hitting something, 
I just tweak this this little guy up quite a bit this blade just barely hanging on there you probably want to change this but I'm not going to change it I'm just going to keep on going looks like everything else is pretty good picked up a little bit of hair and dug a little hole in the wood chips over here when I was upside down that was kind of funny and this blade too popped up a little high so it might be unbalanced for the rest of this flight but I really wanted to just try some needle threading okay and another little flaw here is look at the camera slightly exposed so I have a little chip a little nick when I hit the chain or actually there's a little purple on it so I must have hit that post with the camera so they probably want to guard that camera a little better oh well, anyway let's just get this thing back up and finish off this battery and maybe the next battery oh Jesus all right <laughs> I forgot I was on the bench there okay let's try this again guys now it's it's just really touchy so oh yeah <laughs> just just eating the propellers now guaranteed I broke a propeller in that one the rear propellers both of them are just just fine the front two I'm going to need to replace. This one just completely uh, grinded all the blades off. You see how there's no blades left on this one. And then this one is ready to change because it's all kinked up and cracked. So I'm going to change these two front, get back out there, and see what else we can do. Anyway, here we go. So let's switch straight into air mode and arm it. I'm not sure how much time I'm going to have to fly this thing, but let's just go for it. Man, it just flips so fast. We're already at 10.6 volts. Let's just kind of come around here, check out some trees real quick. So it does fly pretty quick. And it does turn quick, but you just get a little bit of that jitter. So you're gonna have to do some tuning, remember? Woo! Whoa, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So don't thread the needle into a tree if you can't see what's under it. And that's exactly what I did. Stop crashing. <laughs> Maybe it's because it's kind of cold and I'm just unfamiliar with this one, but I'm gonna try to do a little better in this flight and just, gosh, keep it where I know is clear. Anyway, there was just one tiny little bent, bend on the propeller, bent it back, nothing else, no damage whatsoever. I got the new stock battery and the fully charged stock battery. And let's just continue on one last battery and then we'll go through a pros and cons. I'm thinking maybe it's because it's kind of cold. It's like 45, 50 degrees right now. And I'm just not used to it. Here we go. Okay, stock battery. Let's get in. There's Kian swinging in the swing there. Let's get a little bit in tune with this thing. Come on now. And I know there's a little bit of a gap down here if I don't hit this tree. Let me see if I can just do this. There we go, okay. You know what, the stock battery is good enough, man. I'm thinking that other one has, the GNB feels like a little bit too much power for it. I mean, more power the better, but unless you tune it, uh, the stock settings on this, <laughs> look how fast it is. It's just too quick. Unless you really, whoa, power, power lines, guys. Let's stay away from those. It's just too damn fast. I can't even really go under stuff because it's just so crazy. Ooh, let's try it. Oh. <laughs> Back in the tree. Can we get up? Ah, can we get out? Ah, oh, man. Crashed again. Can you go grab it? Thanks, bud. All right, Ken's gonna go get that for me. That's one good thing about bringing them to the park with me. <laughs> All right, Ken's gonna try to bend the propellers back straight, cleaning off the camera for us, even though we can see through the dirt, apparently. That was a little bit dirty. So I was just crazy. I was, I was cutting the bark off the tree by accident on that one. <laughs> okay, we're gonna launch from a skateboard, I guess. Let's try it. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so we're continuing on. I'm gonna flip back into our air mode. Nice. Thanks, Kian. You did it for us, buddy. 
Wow, so this thing really rips around. It's just gonna really need some tuning. A um, little bit of wobbly, you know, on the hard, the hard acceleration. Right now, that's probably just because. Woo! Probably mostly because of the. Um, <laughs> almost hit the net on that one. Probably mostly because of the propellers are kind of bent. But it's still feeling really good. Okay, we're, we're right at 10 volts. Wow, but look at that, just that lift. It's got loads of power. Okay, we need to get back quick. Look at this, voltage drop. We're out, we're out of voltage. Okay, everything's off. I'm gonna go run and get this and we'll do a pros and cons, guys. All right, guys, so what can we say about the little SPC Maker 95 GF? Uh, a great little quad pros and cons on it would be actually in that crash just one little bent propeller which I can bend up and this thing is fine uh, all the other propellers look good anyway just a little bit dirty also things to be desired it seems like it's tuned a little bit too high in the rates right out of the box so if they want this thing to be kind of ready to fly out of the box they're gonna need to um, tone down those rates a little bit give it a little bit a little bit of expo because as you can see, I had like, there was like no expo tuned into this thing. It was just completely raw, pretty much, is how it felt. So it's gonna need a little bit of tuning from you. If you need to tune this thing, uh, be aware that it's just so quick. You can see how fast I was doing those flips. It was just like insane rates. Uh, but it is very fast and it's got gobs of punch even on these stock little 30c batteries of course you are going to hit that low voltage quicker on the 30c than the gnbs i was trying remember i tried this one and this just gave it so much more power it almost felt like a 4s with this one in there so keep in mind they do make these in like 350 a little bit smaller to match these ones but you can see the punch like going over trees and just kind of in the open flying flying through gates i could see would be no problem but when you're trying to get really technical with this just definitely tune those rates down so you have a little bit more expo in there anyway a great little quad the camera is really good it's a little bright for me on the um, brightness on the camera so you might want to turn that down a little bit you can see how it sticks out a little bit and I'm really lucky I didn't hit the lens straight on when I hit one of those purple metal poles for the playground jungle gym there I just hit it right on the edge there and you can see that purple paint like I explained before so that may have been a camera catastrophe if I hit right on the glass. So I'm really lucky on that one. The FPV was okay. I believe this is only 25 milliwatt. I did not mess with any of the other uh, settings if it does have them. It didn't even have any instructions in the box with this one. There were no instructions. I didn't even go to the SPC Maker site to check on that. So I just left it all stock and that's the FPV signal, which I believe must have been 25 milliwatt um, that I was getting in the goggles with this configuration. Just a regular linear antenna here and then a linear patch on the other side. Anyway guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed that review. The timing of the flights will be in the goggle view. So I'll let you guys look at that and see how long it lasted on the batteries. I know I crashed a lot, sorry about that. I'm just kind of out of my environment, I'm on vacation. Um, I'm like 7,000 feet high, uh, the wind's a lot thinner here, it probably flies different than it is down at almost sea level in Hawaii, and it's also a lot colder, which I'm not used to flying in, so if you are flying in different environments, you may have a little bit of a shock to your system, and it may be a little harder for you to get your bearings and navigate if you're new to an area, if the weather's different if the elevation's different and all that stuff, stuff to be aware of. Anyway guys, I hope you liked that review of the SPC Maker 95 GF, and I will have this down in the description, down below the video. So don't forget to check it out, check those links, and check out all the stuff I'll have down there that I'm using in this video. You definitely wanna get a pair of goggles similar to this, if not these. Um, these are really good goggles, I like them. I've been using them for a while. I will be trying out some new goggles pretty soon. And of course, this is the controller to get if you're starting out in FPV racing. Try to get this one, because it has those hull sensors where it won't wear out. You get better accuracy on your sticks, and it also has a little bit of a bling on it that make it easier to control like these sticks and stuff anyways links in the description for all this stuff and i will see you guys in the next video thanks for watching